Okay, here we have another core two question. Whew. Okay, so logarithms, everybody's favorite. These are actually not that bad, and you can even kind of tell by the mark scheme here. Um, this whole question overall is only nine marks, and these first three are just worth one mark each. It's, it's really just asking you, do you understand what a logarithm is? With logarithms, there are uh, three main properties, and <laughs> when you know it, these three questions are basically asking you each of them. So the first property is called the power property. And that's saying that if we add two different logarithms here, uh, we can write that as the logarithm of the product of those two numbers. So this is going to be log base a of 4 times 10. So that's log base a of 40. That's it. Now that's the answer for part 1 there. For part 2, if it's... All right, now think about this logically. If we're adding and then we multiply, here we're subtracting, so what are we going to do? Divide. So this is log base a of 16 divided by 2. So that's going to be log base a of 8. Uh, that's called the quotient rule, qu quotient property. And the last one is the power property, which states that if we have a coefficient of a log, we can write that as the index. So log base a of 5 to the third, that's what this is, which is the same as log base a of 100. 25. Um, good. If you left it as 5 to the third, important to note, you will not get the mark. You need to actually simplify this to be 125. So those are three basic properties of combining logarithms, which is good. Nice stuff. Uh, part B here. Part B says that now we need to solve this equation. And it says to use logarithms. Um, two ways to do this. I, I mean, really more ways, but uh, two main ways. Uh, I'll tell you this. The first way is this. Don't forget what a logarithm actually is. If we have this, b to the x is equal to y, um, then we can change this as log base b of y is equal to x. So here, look. In the exponential form, y is by itself, whereas in the logarithmic form, x is by itself. These equal each other. These are the same things. So with here, with part b, if I have 1.5, and this is raised to the 3x power, is equal to 7.5, all we need to do is change how this is. So we have log base b. Well, the base b here is 1.5. So log of 1.5 of the y value of 7.5 is equal to x. In this case, it's the index, which here's 3x. Um, so what we need to do is we need to evaluate this. We would need to use the change in base formula because your calculators probably can't change or use any other base than base 10. So we do set log 7.5 over log of 1.5, and this is still equal to 3x. So in your calculators, I'm using my TA84 today. So we just do log of 7.5, close my brackets, divide it by log of 1.5. That's going to be, and I think they want three decimal points, so we can say uh, 4.969. So 4.969 is equal to 3x. So if we take that 4.969 divided by 3, we're going to get 1.656 x is equal to 1.656. That's the first way to do it. Uh, if you don't like rewriting it, you can basically solve this using 
uh, inverse properties, and that is just by taking the log of both sides. So here we could take the log of 1.5 of both sides, 3x, put some brackets in there, is equal to log of 1.5, 7.5, Remember, I, here I just took the log of 1.5, sorry, log base 1.5 of both sides uh, because it's an equation. So I could do whatever I want it to one side as long as I do it to the other side. I chose to do log base 1.5 because using that power property, this drops down in front, and whenever you have the base as the same number you're taking the log of, that equals 1. So 3x times 1 is just 3x is equal to log base 1.5 of 7.5. And if you look, that's actually this step right here. So then we would just need to continue on with the change of base and get the correct answer. You would get the same exact answer. Um, I showed you both ways because some people love using the red method here. Some people love using the green method. It honestly doesn't make a difference. and I think that the more you know about this topic, the more you can see it's really just the exact same thing. It's just a different way of looking at it. However you want to look at it, it, it doesn't matter. Both ways are perfectly acceptable in terms of this exam, and both will give you the correct answer, and both will give you the full three marks. Okay, so that's enough with that, and now we're on to the final part, part C. So given that log base 2 of p is equal to m and log base 8 of q is equal to n, express their product in the form of 2 to the y power, where y is an expression in m and n. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, this one, we're actually going to rewrite these. So again, b to the x is equal to y. This is the same thing as log base b of y is equal to x. Um, so if I have log base 2 of p is equal to m, this is the same thing as, oh, check out what the base is there, 2. So 2 to the m power is equal to p. Oh, well, that's nice. It's, it's in this form with the base of 2. Um, and what about if I had log base 8 of q is equal to n? If I change that around, I'd have this 8 to the n power is equal to q. Ah, well, if I want p times q, that's going to be the same thing as 2 to the m times 8 to the n. Um, and so that's a, that's a good first part here. I can't multiply these. I know it looks tempting to just say, oh, it's 16 to the mn power. If we want to multiply these, they need to be the same base. So what I can do is I can actually rewrite the 8 here because this is actually 2 to the third. 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third, and then that index is still n. Now I can multiply um, and I'm not going to say that 2 times 2 is 4, because remember, when we add, sorry, when we multiply numbers of the same base, we add the indices. Just as if you had x squared times x to the third, that's x to the fifth. Look, base, base, base. The x's all stay the same, so this is going to stay the same as 2, and we just add the indices. So this is going to be m plus 3n power. Um, it even tells us y is an expression of m and n. It doesn't say that y, in this case, the index is an integer or anything. So that's our answer. Uh, and that's it. So logarithms. The complicated thing about them is just the properties. Um, it's kind of the same thing with geometry. Geometry for a lot of people is difficult because there's a lot that you need to know to get around the information. Same with logarithms. Whereas, say, an algebra type topic, you can sort of manipulate it and try a whole bunch of different strategies. 
the key with logarithms is you need to know the properties. You need to know these three properties in the beginning. You need to know how they work and how they relate to exponential functions and basically index properties. But once you have them all down, I honestly think that if you're working on a question just like this, you'll do perfectly fine. If you do have questions, though, feel free to drop a comment.